Do you know the top five common mistakes in model analysis? Well, I do. And I will show you all these typical errors everyone makes in the beginning and I'll show you how to avoid them. After watching this tutorial, you can work faultless. On place number five, the double impact. In model analysis, we impact our structure and listen to the answer and we understand the model. But if we hit it twice by accident, then we didn't get the right answer. We modify the answer of the structure and we get errors in the signal. Okay, that's not the idea. So we need to avoid the double impact during our measurement and therefore there is a quality check in the most of the software. Here it's called bounce. So if I hit it once, you see, this is just one hit, but if I hit it double, you see it's automatically rejected. So this problem of double impact is gone. But I need to measure this point and every time I get a double impact. So what can I do now? The first thing is practice, yeah? You have to be flexible in the movement. It's like these xylophone players yeah, with this, this mallet. They don't push it and wait until the tone comes out. No, they, before we hit it, the movement already goes back and just in the last edge, we get the impact, that's the trick. So you have to be very loose in your hand. And there we got it, okay? But if you still always get double impacts, well, the next thing you can do is forget the high frequency. The problem are the high frequency. You hit it once and the high frequency contact is the second one until you get off. The one trick is you put a rubber between. You have a softer tip. It's not just a hard impact, it gets the impulse to high frequency. So now we have a contact and go off again. You only have to strike it once and it's much easier now to get it without double impact. But what if you need that high frequency content? Well, the problem is the relation of masses. The mass of your object is probably too low in relation to the hammer mass. You need a lighter hammer, okay? So this is down too big. And there are smaller ones. Look for this guy here. It's really tiny, really small. Just hold it like this. Have it really loose just in your fingertips, not in the full hand, and then you can easily strike it like that, okay? And if you still have double impacts, well, there's the last option, make it extremely light. Take off the mass from behind and take this flexible white one, okay? And now I'll show you the trick. Just hold it above the point you wanna have it, bend it and let it flip. You can hit it exactly always at the same spot and you have the perfect reproducibility. And this brings us to place number four, the coherence. Determining the FRF on the basis of a single stroke is not a good basis. Deviation can occur quickly. You hit at a different position, you hit with a different angle, or you maybe hit a glue residue. Make sure your results are comparable. How? Well, we use the coherence. This is a mathematical operation that checks in which frequency range the measured object has a linear vibration behavior. 100% shows a high linearity, 0% rather a noise behavior. Also, this analysis reacts very sensitively to small differences between the strikes. It is therefore also ideal for checking the consistency of the hammer impacts. But sometimes the coherence signal just drops, always in front of a resonance peak. So it's difficult to see if this is a bad signal or is just a normal signal to my object. So therefore, again, there's an automatic evaluation included in your software to activate the coherence check. So all the strikes are good, it will be accepted. If you have bad coherence, it will automatically reject it. So you're faultless. So we see in this software here, we have a lower limit here of 50 Hertz and we can use our measurement up to 3000 Hertz. This is the upper limit automatically evaluated by the software. In this area, we can analyze our structure. This is what we call the range of trust. And this brings us to place number three in the top five common mistakes in model analysis. And it is an obvious source of error, the proper FRF settings, sampling rate, block size, the range, the threshold, the pre-trigger, and the windowing. All these settings affect the measuring time and therefore the frequency resolution of your FRF. And everything depends on each other. So where to start? How can I set this? For example, when do you want a measurement to start? Just before you hit the object. But how can you recognize this point? Well, we have to set the range. How powerful the strike will be. And then you can set the force threshold. Start the measurement when it's 
above this threshold and then you need a pre-trigger depending on the range to start the measure before the threshold is reached. But this has an effect on the measuring time. But you can set this with the right block size. But this depends on the sampling rate you've chosen and this is for the frequency content you like to analyze. See, this is not a linear process. What you need is an overview of all the settings at once, like here in this software. Here are all the parameters that have to be set. All I have to do is just strike the object if you measure it and check out the right pre-trigger, the right block size, just keep on striking and software checks all the parameters at once. If you hear that noise, you see all the traffic lights are green. All settings are done perfectly to match this measurement object and you will get good results. So now we can measure all the points. Next huge step, place number two, the proper curve fitting. We measured now the behavior of the structure at several spots. And now it's time to derive the overall behavior of our structure based on the spot checks. So we describe our measurement object mathematically as a combination of one mass oscillator with different spring stiffnesses and dampings. This model is good if the FRFs derived from this mathematic model fits to the curves of the measured FRFs, curve fitting. However, this should not fit by chance. No, it should fit because we assume the right number of one mass oscillator for the curve fit. So what is the right number? How many modes are in our structure? This is an open field of making an error. In a simple structure, you can easily count the number of modes, but in a more complex assemble structure, it gets all smeared and there's so many modes. We would now have to count all the number of peaks in all FRFs and all directions and thus the number of existing modes in our structure. This is a huge amount of work. So Head Acoustics had that great idea to give that job to a neural network. So in this software, an artificial intelligence analyzes all measured FRF and feeds the proper settings for your count measurements to the curve algorithm. And it does an amazing job. That means this typical source of errors or making the right curve fitting, this is just off the table. And now we come to the most important and most frequently made mistake in modern analysis. The number one issue, choosing the reference point. The complete model analysis is based on all the measured FRFs. And all the FRFs are based on the amplitude and the phase relation to the chosen reference points. Everything depends on your reference points. If someone tells you, well, you can use any arbitrary point, then you know this is not a professional model analyst, not even part-time. The determining of a proper reference point is the most important thing and the first thing you have to do if you do a model analysis. Is any point on the structure a suitable reference point? No. Some points are very lively and they move in all oscillating forms quite strong, while other points are lazy and they are on the north on a symmetric line and in some oscillating forms they don't move at all. With the FAF calculation, the movement of each measurement point is calculated in comparison to the movement of the reference point. So which points are moving in the individual modes? Well, there will be a torsion mode, there will be a bending mode, the first two or three modes I can imagine. But what about the 15th? or the 16th mode of this assembled part, <laughs> no way. So how to start? Well, many engineers place one or two reference points just by instinct and make a first model analysis. It takes a half day for an object like that. Then you get a result. Well, the experienced engineer would see, ah, the one mode doesn't look that good. My reference point should be placed here, otherwise it's just in the center line. So a second model analysis has to be done to get the right arrangement of your reference point. So after doing two model analysis, you get the right arrangement to do with the right final model analysis. Too much waste of time. But this is even better than just accept the first model analysis results. If your point was just on a not line, there is no no peak in the FRF and so there is no mode expectation of the curve fitting. So you completely miss this mode and this is not good. To ensure you reveal all the modes which are in your structure, on the first try it's quite clever to do a pre-test, target oriented, just to get the right position to reveal all the modes of your structure. And then you do a model analysis. 
It's like if you have a cough and you go to your doctor. Before you get a medicine, the first thing you do, he will just check your lungs. With your stethoscope, he's listening and clipping each point and he had an idea what's wrong in your lungs. That we can do also with a hammer and an oscillometer. You place an oscillometer at a point and just strike just the same spot and listen what is the structure about. To do this, this is very easy. Here in Artemis Suite, if I go on acquisition, of course I can do an impact measurement. But before in the preparation, there's this cool tool it's called Reference Plus. This tool guides you to do so-called driving points measurement. The cool thing is the artificial intelligence gives you a direct feedback how many modes are in your structure and which reference points are suitable to catch which of these modes. For example, if I go for that point here, you can see 16 of 18 modes can be determined with this reference in good quality. But two modes suffer from bad signal. Other points can reveal these modes, but with them, other modes are likely to end up in maybe a bad phase relation with a low MPC. So the artificial intelligence gives me now the good advice, take this, that's why there's a star, and combine it with that, and then you get all the 18 modes clearly. So this is the advice to place the reference point for this object, just a few strikes and you get this good advice. And this is often the case if you have a sample part, on each part should be one reference point to catch them all. Let's have a look in the model analysis results. Now we have chosen these two reference points suggested by the software and we see yeah, all the modes can now be seen, the movement of this complex body looks quite good. We have good results here and here we have this macro tail. This gives you a good idea how good you have worked here and it is a clear diagonal line. The only thing that might be interesting at this point here, might we just click on it, have a look at com mode 10 in comparison to mode number 9. Let's have a look. So these are highlighted here. So this mode could be similar to very close mode number 10. Yes, it looks very similar in this part here, but here now it's in line, it's in the same phase. If I go back now, and now it's anti-phase, so 180 degree difference. So it looks on the first view the same, but it's not the same. That's why it's separated and still below the threshold level. We have a perfect model analysis of this object. There was an interesting study. Professional model analysis and people who never done a model analysis should make a model analysis of this standardized object. Once without any help and once with the help of the artificial intelligence. The result was that Without the support, not even the half of the participant could manage to get all the 18 modes out of the structure. With the AI support, every participant was able to determine proper reference point, find the correct measurement setup for the FOF, and made all the measurements without any errors, and therefore determine all the 18 modes of this test object on the first try. Wow! This is a message. And that's how it should be. You get reliable, good, quick results, no matter who is doing the measurement. If you would like to try this out for yourself, or maybe you're unsure if you overlook one of the modes of your test object, you can apply here for a free trial version. And then you make sure that all these five top mistakes of modern analysis will never happen to you again.